Hey everybody, this is Ben with devslopes.com. And in this video, we're gonna do just a little bit of collision cleanup. As we noticed in the last video, we've got a bit of a problem. Just as a refresher, let's press play and show you. We wrote a really awesome script that allows us to recolor all of these buildings when they come into contact with an enemy orb or a paintball rather. So let's press pause and go over to the map route so that we can kind of see what's going on. So double click the map route and then unselect this building, set, and you'll notice, maybe unless none of them have fired, that's fortunate. Let's unpause and watch. Now, right there, you'll notice that this enemy, this guy right here, shot off a paintball. And all the way down this line before the paintball destroyed itself, the buildings it came into contact with are red. That's not really expected behavior. We don't want these enemies to be able to hit more than one building at a time. So that's what we're going to fix now. Let's stop running. And we're going to go ahead and open our scripts directory and right click on the collision handlers folder and we will create a new C sharp script. And we're going to call this trigger destruction. This script is going to be a lot like what we wrote for the sound. If we take a look there at the collision audio manager, you'll see if I take a look at this preview, that we've got a sound clip and then a string of target tags. And then on trigger enter, we attempt to play the sound. Well, that's close to what we're doing, but there's a there are a few key differences that I'm going to point out here. So let's dive into the trigger destruction script. After we've double clicked the trigger destruction script, Let's go in here and we are going to take out these two functions, the start and update function. We don't need those. We're going to create a serialized field. And this is going to be a private array of type string. So let's type private string array target tags. And that's really all the info that we need. Let's go ahead and use a function called on trigger exit. And it's private void on trigger exit, and it passes in a collider named other. This is a lot like the trigger enter function. It's just when it's leaving the object instead of when it's coming in. And the reason that we want to use this over enter is typically you try to use enter, but with this, there are a few different things like, like the sound and more importantly, the paint that happen on trigger enter. And so you run into what's called a race condition where you're expecting something to happen ahead of something else, but there's no guarantee. And we don't really want that in our code. It's super buggy and we, we just don't want that. So instead, we're going to say on trigger exit to make sure that everything that's using on trigger enter can resolve before we get to this point. And all we're going to say is if target tags dot contains other dot tag, then destroy current game object. That's it. We're just saying if it's a tag that it's supposed to be affecting, then destroy this game object when it leaves. So let's save that script and head back to Unity. And now we're gonna head up to our game objects and click on the paintball, scroll down here, and just somewhere in this list of scripts and properties, we're gonna drag this trigger destruction script onto it and then add some target tags. Now, what are the two tags that can be affected by this paintball? What are the targets? If one of your answers was building, you're correct. If the other was POI, then great job, you got both of them. 
Now, if all is according to plan, then this should now only affect one building. Let's press play and find out if that's going on. We'll zoom out a little just so we can see. Yep, perfect. Now we've got a few different buildings that are all different colors based on what shot it last. We've got a red building, an orange building, a purple building, and a black building. And those are all the different colors that have been shot off thus far. And there's only one painted at a time. Perfect. That's what we were going for. So let's stop running that. And then we've got a couple of other little collision cleanup things to do. The first is if we click on our enemy tank, you'll notice that it's untagged. But there are a few things depending on a specific tag called enemy. So let's go in and add a tag. Click the plus sign and say enemy with a capital E. Now we need to go take a look at our water ball. This water ball has a script called water ball. So let's double click on the water ball script to go into it and make some changes. Now in our IDE, we're just going to go ahead and uncomment this whole line. Because now we should have the compare tag enemy. Enemy should be a valid tag. Game manager .instance has the enemy hit function and it's fully implemented. And then we can destroy this water ball. And we can do that on trigger enter because it's not really going to do anything after it's collided with something else. So let's save that and head back to Unity. And there's one more problem that we're going to run into. Let me scroll out a bit and you tell me what you see. I'm going to drag the water ball onto the screen and then I'm going to go grab a paint ball and drag it onto the screen as well. See a difference? Let me move the paint ball a little closer and zoom in and you should be able to tell pretty well what I'm talking about. Compared to the paintball, this water ball is huge, like absolutely ginormous. So let's go ahead and fix that. We're just going to press R for the scale, and we're going to bring this down to about where we want it to be-ish, so it's on par with the paintball. Drag it down, set it up side by side. We're close enough now that we can see. So let's shrink this just a little bit more. And if we take a look at the actual scale, we can see that it that the paintball is at 0 0.0184 ish. I wonder if it goes past that. Yeah. So 0 0.018479, blah, blah, blah. Let's bring our water ball so it's just a little bit bigger than that. Let's put it at 0 0.02 for each of these parameters. Drag it up and see how that shapes up. Okay. It's just slightly bigger, and we can even do a bit more than that. Let's see how this looks at 0 0.05. Okay, that's maybe a little too big, yeah. Let's just go with 0 0.025. Perfect. So this is a little bit bigger than the paintball. Now we can adjust this later on, but it is important to note that it was massively huge compared to the paintball. And we want them roughly the same size-ish. Otherwise, we're going to run into display issues with the camera, and it's just not going to look right when we go and build this on an actual device. So now that that's done, let's apply our changes to the water ball. And then we're just going to get rid of the water ball and the paintball that we dropped on the screen. Perfect. Go ahead and save. And then we need to update collab.
because we haven't done that in a while and we should have. So we're just going to add an over sweep, an overarching description of what we've done. So we've added sounds, collision detection, and cleanup. And we're going to publish. Perfect. We are now up to date. And we are much, much closer to having a fully functional game here. We're going to go ahead and call this video good. So just save one more time to be sure. And great job following along. In this video, we've done some collision cleanup. We've added a few scripts to their proper place so that the paintball will destroy at the proper time and not have that whole line effect. We've also updated the water ball to be the right size and to have actual functionality when it hits an enemy. And just to double check, let's make sure that our tank actually got that tag. It did not. So let's go ahead and tag the enemy, the enemy tank with the enemy tag and make that change. I'm just going to push to collab one more time and say added enemy tag to tank. Tanks. And we're updated for real this time. We also just got our tank updated to the proper tag so that we don't run into that issue later. So again, great job. I'm excited to move on with this and see what our product's looking like. This has been with devslopes.com, and we'll see you next time.